So what we've shown you now is how to produce a very painterly, very emotive style Photoshop drawing based on a SketchUp model. And this hasn't involved any type of render engine. This is just based on SketchUp and Photoshop. Typically what we'll use here in the studio is V-Ray for SketchUp. And the reason we use a photoreal render engine is we help that it feels give solidity to some of the materials. We love the fact that we can get great reflections, great movement in the water. Um, we can get varying reflections, varying bumps and textures. These are all things that are totally doable in Photoshop, but they take a long time. And so what V-Ray has enabled us to do is make things look a little bit more believable, a little more real, while also adding the great reflections and the textures in the drawing. And in my opinion, I really do think that it works very well with the soft Photoshop painter style as well. Hi, uh, my name is Patrick Westfelt here with Studio JDK. And um, uh, I'm going to be showing you today a, uh, why we use V-Ray in the office to enhance our workflow and ultimately our final output. Uh, this is the model that Jeremy created that um, was showing you around earlier. And um, at this point in our workflow, he'll hand off the model and it'll be my job to set up the materials and lighting uh, for V-Ray. Uh, we, uh, we use V-Ray to enhance the materials and the lighting and shadows, um, which will ultimately make our job in Photoshop later and it'll just be a more lively, exciting drawing. Um, the first step I will do is, uh, I like to do, is just set up the general lighting. And in a quick concept sketch like this, I really won't spend much time. The first thing Jeremy and I will do will be to set up the shadows. So we'll just go up to the shadow settings um, <clears throat> through SketchUp and just pick out the time of day and which way the shadows are casting. Uh, after that, the next step We'll just run a test render. We'll go ahead and press render and end up with something like um, something like this, with all with no materials, maybe just some glass and water, and see what the lighting's doing, the time of day. And in this scene, the only artificial lighting I've set up is just a few rectangle lights in the spaces, just to illuminate them a little bit more to make them pop in the final drawing. Um, so after we dial in the lighting to a scene, uh, the next step is to dive in the materials. Uh, with a quick concept sketch like this, we really like to focus on just the reflection and the bump of the materials. Uh, the bump being um, the relief that the material uh, seems, to, seems to have. For example, one of the larger materials in this scene uh, is the stone, the local Cayman stone. So using Photoshop or other software, we will create a bump map, which is essentially like a relief map to uh, give it some depth in the final rendering. Um, and then, actually, in this case, we didn't put any reflection on the stone. Stone's pretty matte, matte looking. Then the next material we'll tackle is the pool water. Um, again, it's just a simple bump map and reflection to give it um, some life um, and some energy and uh, some color, too. Um, and then some other materials in the scene that we'll, we'll touch on a little bit. We'll put a little bit of reflection on the concrete and, um, and uh, some of the metal uh, trim work and stuff. Uh, just an example of the preview of the, what the materials will look like in the, in the V-Ray window. You know, this is our pool material. This is our glass. They're very simple, standard V-Ray materials. Uh, there's other materials types of materials for V-Ray that we'll use in uh, other models, but for this one, we're just trying to get the idea and communicate the life and the energy of the materials in this project. Um, and then once we have, you know, once we, we go that direction, we'll, we'll just kind of fine tune the materials. Does, it, does, a, does a, the stone have too much bump? Does it look pixelated? Do we need to go back to the material and refine it? Uh, are the shadows and lighting still working? Uh, the, mater the materiality of the building will change the lighting slightly too. We set that up first, but if you have a lot of dark materials, that'll absorb a lot of the lighting. It'll be a darker image. If we need to brighten it, we'll go back in. And in this scene, you can see the lighting that I've set up 
there's a dome light and we'll put in an HDR image in there uh, to add to the reflections and give it a nice little natural uh, uh, coloring and gradients throughout, uh, throughout the model. And then really no fancy stuff here, um, just a bunch of simple rectangle lights um, that I've put in the rooms to, to light it up. And uh, let's see if we can show you what the final renderings look like. So this is an example of a, a fairly high quality final rendering. And, um, and there's a lot of imperfections with this. Uh, but this is a great base to what we'll give to Jeremy now. And he'll add this to our Photoshop stack, which he's already created with the lines and colors select. And as you can see, there's even you know, blatant imperfections in this stone here. There's this, these black markings that come out. And um, yes, we'd love if those weren't there. But at this stage, we've, we've rendered it. And we'll just go into Photoshop and stamp those out, uh, make it look uh, different. Uh, some, some things you can do with V-Ray is you can render out several different passes uh, that we'll add to our stack to enhance the drawing as well. This is an example of a reflection uh, pass. And here's an example of a material ID, which is the exact same idea as Jeremy's color select layer. Um, V-Ray can do this automatically, which is, is a real time saver. Uh, it has, and there's a myriad of different passes too that you can use as you wish to uh, get the desired effect in post production that you want. So, what we're looking at right now on the screen is the drawing that we just completed. And what I want to do is just show you what I've done is I've gone in and I have had the V-Ray done of the architecture. And so now this is the V-Ray base that we're looking at here, still totally ingrained in our painted world. But we just get a little bit more believability. There's a little bit of reflection here on the window that's reflecting the back gate. You're gonna get a little bit of the reflection here on the glass that's reflecting the furniture. You're gonna get a little bit of the color here in the bottom that's reflecting the pool. You can see the planters being reflected here. These are things, again, totally doable in Photoshop, but they take a lot of time and they take a lot of, uh, quite frankly, uh, attention to detail. And when we really get into some tighter drawings, um, you know, V-Ray becomes more and more invaluable. But what I wanted to show here was the fact that, look, we can still do the painterly style and have a very photo real, uh, or at least a the start of a photo reel render. So here's the base render. We get really beautiful quality of light with the shadows uh, in V-Ray. We can do some nicer lighting on the interior here. Totally a concept drawing. We're not worried about everything looking perfect as, as I've explained several times, um, but we are able to take that V-Ray render and turn it into that drawing. The other thing we can do is we can add a little bit more realism to the vegetation. Again, it's all about personal taste for you and your clients. Uh, one program that we really like using quite a bit for vegetation is a pro uh, program called View from Eon Software. And what I'll do is I'll show you very quickly how we can start importing trees from View into a scene like this and still making them work. So I have already gone ahead and imported um, a palm tree into view and actually let me go back and i'll show you exactly how we did that so here's our view workspace notice i haven't brought our model into view i'm not really concerned about it we did the modeling and sketchup the rendering and, and uh, v-ray what we're really looking for here is the trees so i'm going to come over here to the tree icon and i'm going to right click and that's going to bring up my my tree option box here i want a couple coconut palms to start with, if I hit OK, View is going to generate a palm for me. I'm just going to drag him into the scene here. And <clears throat> you can see up here on the top right, I'm getting a little window of, of what that is starting to look like. So I know if I go back to my Photoshop scene, generally where the light is coming from. So it's definitely coming from the top, you could argue the top right. So if I go into View, I can now start to match where that sun is coming from on my palm. So I've moved my sun around. It's now coming from 
you know, let's just call it make it a little more believable. So now here is our uh, palm tree with a little bit more of the uh, lighting effects that we have going on in our Photoshop file. And what I'm going to do is just make sure that uh, in my render option settings, I have hide infinite plane from alpha checked. It's really all you need. You can pick uh, your render quality here. Um, this isn't going to be a view tutorial, so I'm not going to go into it in, in great lengths. I just want to show you how easy it is using SketchUp and Vue together. And so I've gone into just a final render quality for this tutorial. Uh, you can you know, pick uh, picture size and resolution. I'm going to hit OK for all of that for now. I'm just going to hit Render. So now Vue is generating a rendering of the coconut palm. Once that's done, it's going to ask me if I want to save it. And I'm going to save with this little disk button here, disk icon. I'm going to save it, and we'll save it to SketchUp Demo. We'll just call this Palm. All right, TIFF is fine. Save. Now I'm just going to save the uh, alpha channel as well which is the fourth icon from the left, kind of like the same icon as a mask button in Photoshop. And I'm going to save that. And we're going to call that Palm A for alpha. So if I go back to Photoshop, now what we can do is open Palm A and Palm. And I'm going to Command All on my alpha channel layer and copy. The only tricky part of, of, of this whole process, it's not even very tricky, is you need to go into your channels uh, layer here. I'm going to go into channels. I'm going to create a new alpha channel. I'm going to paste that into place. Go back to RGB. And then if I hold my selection tool over the alpha and click, it's going to give me that palm tree. Really easy. So now I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste. So now we have our palm tree here that has been lit specifically uh, by view. It's a little bit of a low resolution in the tutorial, but we would typically go a little higher. You can move that up into um, where I have the other palms. I can drag up the alpha channel to mask that out. I can certainly come in here and give it my pencil lines. And so we still get a very soft painterly effect, but now we have a little bit more photoreal painterly tree. Nice hybrid between the two that is, is catching direct sunlight from um, the way we've kind of rendered it in the scene. And the great thing about Vue um, is anytime I place a new palm, uh, it's never going to give me the same palm twice. You can really get a lot of great diversity of tree species and tree uh, growth by... Um, continuing placing new palms. So here we go. I'm going to do a couple more really quick. This is all in real time. So you can see how, how this can go for a concept drawing. And obviously, concept drawings are meant to go fast. Uh, in your workflow, if you're working on something that needs to be tighter, you're going to take greater care in all of this. Uh, but what I'm trying to get across right now is um, you don't need to, to kill yourself over a concept drawing. This is about communicating ideas. And if you can start getting very good at your own style and your own process, um, it's going to be a great communication tool for you um, as a designer and architect. So I'm just moving a couple in the background. I'm going to rotate them. So these are Bob Ross trees on steroids now. All right, so we're going to go here. Let's render. So now they're all lit. And the very cool thing about Vue is that if you get the sun settings right, the, the trees will actually cast shadows on other trees, which is, makes it very real and very believable. Again, all things you can do in Photoshop, but uh, very time consuming um, and uh, hard to get accurate. So I'm going to save that collection of palms. We're going to call that palm group. 
We're going to save the alpha. There's a lot of um, methods to doing this. Um, I'm showing you a very down and dirty way of getting view trees into your SketchUp and Photoshop and V-Ray render here. Uh, Pong group alpha. So we're going to come into Photoshop, open, Palm group. We're going to open those. We're going to select our alpha. Open a new channel. Select it. We're going to copy those into this file. So a lot of the principles that we used for the Photoshop painting can still be applied to um, more photorealistic elements. So I'll show you what I mean here. So if we go back to our uh, layers, so we have layer five, and this will be palm group. And we're going to mask them out the same way that we've masked out all our other trees. Can make them feel a little more hand-drawn. And now it's really easy, same way that we talked about with the painting, is we can make these recede into the background by lowering the opacity of our pencil in our render file. Make those feel like they're a little bit more in the jungle back there. Um, and if it starts to get a little... So, two things. One is you can definitely use a combination of both painted trees and photographic trees or view trees, whatever you want to do. The other one is you can make your scene totally... Uh, view or photographic trees, which will add a lot more realism to the drawing. It may take a little bit longer. Again, totally up to you as the designer and the artist. I'm just here to show you one method, or actually a couple methods at this point. And, uh, and there you go. So I may just hide a couple of these background palms to make it more clear what we're looking at. But you can imagine the entire scene here being populated with those uh, view trees and it would add a lot more uh, realism to the drawing.